For a decade, the Lagina brothers and their dedicated team have unraveled mysteries deep within Oak Island's bizarre landscape. Each discovery has resolved a piece of the Oak Island's centuries-old puzzle, from intriguing artifacts to unexpected revelations. With every discovery made in 2022 taking them a step closer to the island's treasure, they have also made discoveries that change history as we know it. What are these untold stories of Oak Island? How close is the team to discovering the hidden riches of this island? Join us on this great adventure as the curse of Oak Island unveils its top 10 discoveries of 2022. Following recent discoveries of silver and gold in the Money Pit, the Lagina brothers and their crew aim to find the legendary treasures using advanced tools like muon tomography. They also planned extensive digging, including new tunnel and shaft methods to pinpoint the treasure's location. Additionally, they broadened their search in the swamp and explored European countries to uncover Oak Island's origins. FDR's boot, 80 feet into the Money Pit area, something fascinating was discovered. After struggling with the obstacle that obstructed the team from accessing the treasures, the team finally removed this mysterious rock from the TF1 shaft. This mysterious rock turned out to be a drilled-through boulder from the D2 borehole, where gold evidence was previously discovered at 90 feet. That was not all that was found on the site. The team found a rubber boot dating back to 1908 to 1909, bearing the name Kaufman. It is speculated that the boot might have belonged to a member of the old gold salvage and wrecking company, led by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1909. The connection to Roosevelt's historic excavation near the Money Pit suggested a potential breakthrough, hinting at a timeline shift of 112 years. The team continued exploring the site, which led to recovering a gold piece in the D2 borehole, differentiating their progress from Roosevelt's efforts. They also discovered ancient timbers, which made them anticipate what was buried deep in the ground, but the team had to pause the excavation at night. Spikes and Rock Drill Still in the Money Pit area, the Oak Island team closely monitored the excavation of the B4C shaft, which was just five feet north of Borehole C1. The team hoped to reach the 90-foot depth in the C1 cluster, where earlier evidence of potentially 15th-century wooden tunnels and traces of silver and gold were found. They speculated that they may have located the original Money Pit or a tunnel leading to a treasure chamber. Even though a bedrock stopped them 130 feet in the B4C shaft, they were still determined. Several efforts led to the unveiling of a hand-wrought spike and a rock drill. The rock drill is thought to date back to medieval times. It might have been used in constructing the original Money Pit chamber. Later, blacksmithing expert Carmen Lega analyzed the iron spike in the research center and hinted that it was potentially linked to the original Money Pit construction. The rock drill's age raises the possibility that it was used in carving out a chamber. Shipwreck Uncovered Rick Lagina and the team prepared for a dive operation in the war room with underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence and diver Tony Sampson. Dr. Spence, who has over 50 years of experience in treasure hunting and underwater exploration, is to examine the data provided by CSR Geosurveys to help identify areas to be explored. During a recent magnetometer survey, the team was on a quest to unravel the mysteries of the anomalies detected near Lot 5 and Frog Island Shoal. These anomalies, especially those close to Frog Island, could indicate a shipwreck. As the operation began, Tony Sampson used an Aquascan DX200 magnetometer to detect iron targets buried beneath the ocean floor. Not long after, the team received positive signals that signified the presence of a large metallic object, but because of the silt and vegetation underwater, it was hard to see and detect clearly, making the team expand the search area. After more magnetometer detections and underwater exploration, Dr. Spence believes the anomalies could be part of a ship oval chain and ox shoe. Metal detection specialist Gary Drayton and treasure hunter Michael John arrived on Lot 8, hoping to find something groundbreaking. Recently, Lot 8 has become an important area of the team's exploration since they started noticing significant metallic anomalies 
while using their ground-penetrating radar at a depth of 20 feet. Gary Drayton observed a layer of rocks across the area that indicated human activities. Further evidence is unveiled in the form of a mysterious stone-paved feature, a sizable boulder, and a semi-precious garnet gemstone that 32nd-degree Freemason Scott Clark believes could be linked to the Knights Templar and the Ark of the Covenant. While Rick, Marty, and Craig waited for governmental permission to excavate where the anomaly was located, Gary and Michael set out to uncover clues that would help prove Scott Clark's theory. Their initial target scene produces a signal on the metal detector, hinting that they might have found historical artifacts. After digging, they found an old oval chain link that was probably used to transport a large chest. They continue exploring and then stubble on a deep-seated ox shoe, which adds to the mystery. The ox shoe was still in good condition and excellent, and it also pointed out that heavy cargo was carried along these paths. These discoveries align with past discoveries from over two years when the team uncovered ancient stone pathways, ox shoes, and evidence of large-scale cargo operations on the island. The team believes a major operation was carried out in Lot 8, and this theory also aligns with Scott Clark's theory of Knights Templar activities in the area and the possible concealment of religious artifacts. Mysterious Parchment Craig Tester informs the team about a piece of parchment on the wash table. To know what this was, they journeyed to the interpretive center where Rick Lagina, Craig Tester, and Laird Niven met with imaging experts John Ginka and David Sampson. They hoped that they could analyze the parchment using the Skyscan 1273 device. The scanning process began, and Genka explained the reconstruction of the original sample from various slices. The team observed straight lines on the top and bottom, which indicated the parchment's placement. Science identifies bright spots on the center line that could indicate iron-based ink used for writing. This type of ink was developed in Europe during the 5th century AD. It was made by mixing iron salts and tannic acids. Pondering how significant the parchment could be, the team considered historical theories that the money pit contained treasure and valuable documents too. Sampson disclosed that the iron residue should remain, visibly even if the ink is no longer readable. This leaves the team wondering why such an amount of effort was used to document something on parchment and what kind of valuable information would have been on this parchment. The next day, the team reconvened with Bruker, John, and David imaging experts in the war room. The experts presented higher-resolution scans of the parchment, emphasizing the striation's directionality. They discussed the density and composition, which showed that the parchment was either a paper or a cellulose-type product, but not animal skin. They also confirmed the presence of iron by examining the colored blobs on the parchment, showing that the paper was wax-coated or that the supposed parchment was just wax. Shocking Templar Cannon Found in Portugal Rick Lagina and the team visited a military museum in Lisbon, Portugal, to consult with Portuguese military history experts, Sergeants Ricardo Lopez and Carlos Magro. They presented the stone shot found on Oak Island, hoping that they could trace their origin back to Portugal. The team thinks a match exists between the Oak Island stone shots and those in the museum. The team thinks the stone shots were used to protect activities on Oak Island, by mounting cannons on the island. The military history experts confirm the sample matches a known caliber of shots from the 15th and 16th centuries. This discovery leads the teammates to wonder how all these relate to the wooden tunnels found earlier and the concentrations of silver and gold. Later in the afternoon, in the quest for an answer, the team travels to Sintra and visits Quinta da Regalera, an estate with Templar history. Templar historian João Fiandeiro discusses the Templar Knights' presence in Sintra and Antonio Augusto de Carvalho Monteiro's establishment of the Estate for Masonic and Templar rituals. They focused on the initiation well, a deep structure with nine levels and a 13-foot diameter. The well is similar to the structure of the Oak Island Money Pit, hidden inscription linked to Knights Templar. Rick Lagina, accompanied by his nephews Peter and Alex, 
along with Oak Island historian Doug Crowell, set out on a journey to Pavoa de Lanjoso, Portugal, to explore potential connections between the Knights Templar, specifically the 14th century sect that was famously referred to as the Knights of Christ, and the recent discoveries on Oak Island that are believed to have Portuguese origins. These discoveries include a stone road in the swamp, a ship's cannon fragment, and two stone cannonballs. They begin their investigation in the church of Fontarcada, where local historian Joao noted that it was the first land granted to the Knights Templar in Portugal. The church, dating back to 1126, holds symbolic clues rather than written records. They examined the church walls for masons' marks and other symbols, and found one similar to the one carved to the legendary 90-foot stone on Oak Island. The discovery raises questions about the origin and meaning of that unique symbol. The team then heads to Tamar, Portugal, known as the Templar City, to explore the Templar connection further. The city's Church of St. John the Baptist is another significant Templar site. The team discussed with experts the history of the Knights Templar in Tamar, their rebranding as the Order of Christ, and the symbolic changes in their cross emblem. The conversation with Joao and the examination of symbols show the possibility that Nolan's Cross, a formation discovered on Oak Island, represents the symbol of the Portuguese Knights of Christ. The similarities between the elongated cross on the church and Nolan's cross confirm this theory. Evidence of shipwreck in swamp. Michael John and heavy equipment operator Billy Gerhardt, along with Gary Drayton, David and Peter, explored the southern edge of the mysterious triangle-shaped swamp. Their mission was to validate Scott Clark's theory, but they were unable to discover any metal that would shed more light on the theory. However, they uncover intriguing ship-related artifacts, such as pieces of wood resembling old sailing ship components. The discoveries include irregularly shaped planks that looked like decking or siding from a large ship. This unique piece of wood could be linked to a smaller nautical vessel, possibly associated with the trapezoid-shaped artifact dated to the 1680s. These findings prompt discussions about Fred Nolan's previous discoveries, raising the possibility of a ship hidden in the swamp. The prospect of connecting these artifacts to traces of silver detected in the money pit adds further significance to the ongoing investigation. On Lot 8, Metal detection expert Gary Drayton, Jack Begley, and surveyor Steve Guptill explore an intriguing anomaly marked by LIDAR and Xena's map. The anomaly is characterized by a VLF hit, suggesting something beneath the surface. The team begins gridding the area for investigation, emphasizing the importance of understanding the island comprehensively. In Lot 8, the team discovers a significant metal object resembling the head of an iron rod or possibly a chisel. Gary Drayton suggests it could be a swage handpoint chisel dating back to the Middle Ages, adding historical depth to the Oak Island mystery. The finding raises questions about the area's history and the possibility of additional significant artifacts. The ongoing discoveries in the swamp and Lot 8 fuel the team's determination to uncover the secrets of Oak Island. In addition to artifacts, the team has recovered a metal object similar to those found near Smith's Cove on the island's eastern end. Blacksmithing expert Carmen Lega deemed two iron tools, known as swages, discovered on the western side to be of significant importance. The team ponders the potential age of these artifacts and their connection to deeper anomalies detected underground. Following these discoveries, Marty Lagina, Jack Begley, and Gary Drayton embark on an excavation on Lot 8, a location with compelling anomalies. The team gains permission for a five-foot-deep dig to explore the mysteries beneath the surface. Equipped with metal detectors and optimism, they aim to find evidence of human activity in hopes of obtaining a permit for more extensive excavation. The team encounters challenges during the Lot 8 dig, including rocks and signs of prior disturbance. Despite the obstacles, they unearthed a massive artificially placed boulder and a paved feature, indicating potential human intervention. The team speculates about the significance of these findings, pondering the existence of tunnels, vaults, or hidden treasures below. 
The investigation turns unexpectedly when Gary Drayton discovers a unique artifact, a piece resembling part of a horse's bridle. This raises questions about why a horse-related item would be found on Oak Island, considering historical records only mention the use of oxen for farming on the eastern end. The team contemplates the rarity of such a discovery and its potential link to other artifacts and anomalies. The team's excitement grows as they consider the uniqueness of these discoveries and the possibility of uncovering more hidden secrets on Oak Island. The findings, including the horse-related artifact and the chain, add complexity to the island's history and fuel the team's determination to delve deeper into the mysteries beneath the surface. These discoveries have added layers to Oak Island's mysterious past, fueling the team's determination to unveil the island's hidden secrets. Future excavations promise more revelations, promising a deeper understanding of the historical significance of each discovery. Let's hear your thoughts in the comments about what you expect the new season of Oak Island to bring below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. See you soon.